we look at the periodic table of elements, or what I like to call the periodic table of atoms, we know that the atomic number, which is the number that the atom uh, has above its symbol, is the number of protons. And on the periodic table, that is also going to equal the number of electrons. And recall that we looked at carbon, and from the atomic number, we know that carbon has six protons. That's what makes the atom carbon. And it also is going to have six electrons because the number of protons equal the number of electrons. So any atom on the periodic table is neutral. So protons, that would be like having a plus six charge. And in order to balance out the charge, the six electrons would give the molecule, a, or the, the atom, a negative six charge. And the overall charge on any atom on the periodic table is zero. We're going to see that ions can be formed, and that is a column on the blue sheet. And an ion is formed when an atom or a group of atoms gains or loses electrons. So atoms or groups of atoms may have a positive or a negative charge. For example, hydrogen likes to exist as hydrogen plus, and if we don't have a number there, it's understood to be a plus one. This would be a hydrogen that has one proton, which is positive, and zero electrons. So hydrogen is happy to lose one electron. It really doesn't lose the electron. Another atom steals it. Uh, another example of a charged atom is uh, an atom of chlorine. It likes to be a negative one. So an atom of chlorine has 17 protons. So that's what makes it chlorine. And chlorine may steal an electron from hydrogen. So it's going to have one extra electron. <clears throat> we can think about that as maybe as positive 17 minus 18 to give us a negative 1, or just look at the charges. We have one extra negative charge. We are going to see from the periodic table that every atom in column 1 likes to lose one electron, so we'll place a plus 1 above this group. Column 2 likes to lose two electrons. So if anything happens to the electrons in this column, it's always going to be losing two electrons. We're going to skip over these because we're going to see later that atoms in this block may lose a variety of different electrons. So we're going to go over here to aluminum, and aluminum's a common metal. And we're going to see that a lot. We'll put a plus 3 on aluminum. Zinc likes to be a plus 2. And silver likes to be a plus 1. And if we go over here, we can pretty much cross these off the periodic table. The noble gases or the inert gases don't react. So above fluorine, we can put a negative 1. Above oxygen's column, a negative 2 and above nitrogen's column, a negative 3. And one example of an ionic compound that we're probably familiar with is sodium chloride. So when we get to chapter 5, we're going to care about charges. So the ionic compound NaCl, which we may refer to as table salt, actually results from two ions uh, combining so that their charges cancel to zero. So sodium in a compound is really Na. We know the charge would be a plus one. If chlorine is in a compound, it's going to have a charge of negative one. So we, this turns into the chloride ion. And a positive one and a negative one cancels to zero. 
and we get this formula in ACL. We are not going to care about this until chapter 5. Uh, but since we're going to chapter 9, after chapter 4, this concept of ions was introduced in chapter 4. You can compare these charges with your blue sheet, and there are also polyatomic ions, groups of ions that have charges. And again, that will be seen when we get to the naming chapter in chapter 5.